This video is on skin cancer, and there's only three types. We'll start with the most common. That's basal cell carcinoma. What cell do you think is affected in basal cell carcinoma? It'd be your basal cells. So it's the cancer of your basal cells. There's many ways they describe basal cell carcinoma of the skin. They might call it pearly, shiny, might have rolled edges. So it kind of looks like the edges are rolled. Telangiectasias are common. Um, all those will be in my notes. But on histo, you're gonna see those basal cells. It's gonna look dark, basal cells, and it looks like a nest of basal cells. This abnormal growth proliferation of basal cells. Sometimes they call it palisading. <coughs> This just means they're kind of circled around. All right, so don't get thrown off by that. You still, you'll see those basal cells on histo. What are some risks? How about albinism? That's a risk for any, any skin cancer, really. Or fair skin. Sun exposure, again, another risk for all skin cancers. Sun exposure because UV light, especially UVB light. UVB light, UVA is more for like you know, handheld lights or photo tanning. UVB light, that light when it hits your cell just causes mutation and destruction. Especially on your pyrimidines. So if you recall, you have your purines and your pyrimidines in DNA. So if this is one part of your DNA, and this is a complementary strand of your DNA, and let's just say these are two pyrimidines, when sunlight hits, It'll damage your pyrimidines, cause them to link together. Call we call these pyrimidine dimers. That's one of the ways uh, sunlight can mutate your your DNA. And usually we excise this because we know it's mutated. But but there's a disorder where this excision doesn't take place, and we call that zero derma pigmentosum. And zero derma pigmentosum. You can't excise this mutation, so mutations just build. And so people with this disorder are just at increased risk of skin cancer. So I'll put this under the risk category. All right, that is BCC, that was easy enough. Next up is SCC. This stands for squamous cell carcinoma. It's basically a cancer of your keratinocytes. And because of that, you have a ton of keratin. If you recall, one of the precursor lesions were actinic keratosis. Actinic keratosis. I'm gonna emphasize on that, that keratin. You have increased keratin keratosis. Uh, and it looked kind of scaly, it looked kind of flaky from all that keratin. And in SCC, it'll look kind of the same. Look kind of flaky, look kind of scaly. So I'll just write what I want to write. Scaly? Is that a, is that a proper medical term? Scaly? On his side, you're gonna see all that keratin. It'll actually look like a like a glob, like a pearl of keratin. We call those keratin pearls. Keratin pearls. Now there's a subtype of SCC called keratoacanthoma. And this is where you have a cup-shaped lesion and inside all that keratin debris deposits and you have this keratin, like little pellet in the middle. So I'll just write cup SCC with keratin middle you might see it on a on a picture don't get too freaked out this, this is a different form of SCC what's some risk anything that causes increased turnover of these keratinocytes will increase the risk so if you have a chronic inflammation or chronic draining sinuses if like you have a skin infection that's just not healing and it's constantly draining and draining and draining causing inflammation then that can increase your risk so I'll just write chronic Drainage or inflammation. Inflammation. In the same vein, if you're immunosuppressed, you can have recurrent skin infections and inflammation that just increases your risk. So, right, skin infection or not skin infection, immunosuppression. Immunosuppress. The big ones they want you to know is arsenic. Arsenic is a carcinogen and doesn't just cause skin cancer, it causes other cancers like in your, in your liver. So arsenic is a big one. And if there's arsenic exposure, especially in water, you won't believe how common arsenic is in our water, then it can increase your risk of skin cancer. So arsenic is a big one for SCC that you must know. It's been commonly tested. Last one. We talked about our basal cells. We talked about cranial cells. There's one more really big cell type that we haven't talked about, and that'd be your Melanocytes. Melanocytes. 
So an abnormal proliferation of this is going to be called melanoma. Melanoma. And the look is very distinct, so it's a black lesion. And this, the melanomas are the worst of all three um, skin cancers. It's the one that metastasizes early. It's the one that's the most invasive. Why is that? Well, skin cancers can grow one or two ways, if you can imagine. On your, so this is your skin, and this is your skin cancer. It can grow horizontally across your skin. We call that radial growth. Radial. Or you can imagine it goes into your skin. We call that vertical growth. And vertical growth is not good. It's invading into your skin and then deep into your lymphatics and your, your vessels and it can go further and, and cause metastasis. So vertical growth is not good. Unfortunately for melanoma, it's one of the worst skin cancers because it has a lot of vertical growth. So vertical growth, melanoma. One thing you should also know, because they're from neural crest origins, you can stain them with neural crest stains. So they're S100 positive. So you need to know what they look like grossly and then like histo wise, you need to know What's their, what's their importance? So they're S100 positive. They can come from moles, nevis, <clears throat> especially if that, that mole has, has mutated, undergone dysplasia. How can you tell if that mole is mutated? Well, I have moles. How, do, how can I tell if that mole is mutated? Well, we do the A, B, C, D, E method. So we look for things like A, asymmetry of the mole, if it's well circumscribed or whether it's all wavy and, and wonky. B, B kind of builds on that. This is the border of it. Is it is the border nice around or is it kind of irregular? C is the color. Again, is the color all the same all the way through or is it some shades, some shades here, some shades there? D is the diameter. The bigger it is, the worse it might be. And then E is the evolution. If you have a small, 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 small little black dot and then a couple of days later, like balloons up, then you're thinking <laughs> uh, malignant growth. So these are just ways we can tell if a mole's changing or mutating yeah so dysplastic moles put you at a risk you can have a inherited syndrome where you just have a crop of dysplastic moles you just have dysplastic moles all over the place we call that dysplastic moles syndrome or dysplastic nevus syndrome dysplastic nevus syndrome and it is an autosomal dominant disorder and you can Guess from the name, you just have a ton of dysplastic nevus, and it just puts you at increased risk because there's more chances of this turning into cancer. Now, all melanomas don't look the same, and all melanomas don't act the same. You can have different types of melanoma. You can have lentigo. You can have superficial. Now, these both have less of that vertical growth. It has more of this side-to-side -side radial growth radial so it makes it a little less radial a little less severe all right invades a little less and so they look flatter the next one is nodular you can tell by the way, by the word nodular this is not going to be a flat one this is going to be one that has a lot of vertical growth and sure enough it is so it's more raised and nodulars are more vertical growth and higher risk higher risk and then lastly, you can have something called acral. Acral is seen in the palms and the soles, and it's seen in dark skinned people. Hmm, that is weird. Seen in the palms and soles, places that usually don't get sun exposure. Seen in darker skinned people, people that are usually resistant to melanoma. So this is an odd one. This one, because it's seen in the palms and soles, because it's seen in the darker skinned people, it's, it's thought to be independent of UV radiation. So independent of UV radiation. I'll just write UV and put a circle and a cross over, across over them. So it's not associated with UV radiation. I mean, it's in the palms of your souls. How could it be associated with that? In fact, it's one of the uh, more aggressive and one of the worst prognosis because it's hard to pick up. Yeah, when you're checking out someone's skin for cancer, you're not gonna, hey, let me see the palms of your soul. So this one's a, a big one. So if you're gonna do a skin check, do a skin check. Make sure you cover every, every inch. All right, so that's acral. That's non-UV related, so, hmm. What are some things that can cause melanoma that's not from sun exposure? Well, well, you can have gene mutations. One of the big ones is a mutation in your BRAF. All my markers are running out. Let's see if this one works. BRAF. BRAF is a gene that, that helps cell signaling and cell growth. So you have a mutation in this, you're gonna have uh, abnormal proliferation and cell signaling cell growth. The main mutation is BRAF V600E. More than half of melanomas have this mutation. That's just another mechanism of how you can get melanomas. Treatment for melanoma, we can excise it. We can also give a drug that blocks this. 
that's pretty clever. We know the mechanism of some melanomas. Why don't we give drugs that block it? So we can block this with a drug called bimorophenib, and that just blocks the mutated product. All right, so those are your skin cancers. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.